Thank you, and I really appreciate that. And I think it is super, super important about the being together. And I know I, we all missed it tremendously. And I think at first we didn't realize how much we missed it, but as it continued and continued, and we're like, well, well, when is this going to end? And so tonight's lesson is change, <laughs> change. Anyway, I just thought, well, we'll we'll be able to chime in on this, won't we? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, how do we accept change? Are we troubled by change? Yes. Uh, do we say it's God's will? <laughs> we should. We should. <laughs> Always. Can we control change? Most Sometimes. Of it, most of it we can't really have. I mean, all this that happened, we had no control. No control. It was out of our control. It really cracks me up with working with children. One mm -hmm. of the questions they ask often is how does the child cope with change? And I'm just like, well, how does everyone cope with change? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just because some kids respond differently, I'm just like, and then lots of times when we get paperwork back, it says, you know, pre warn them of any changes or, you know, they don't accept change very well and stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's like everybody, all kids, all adults. <laughs> I know. We all would like to be pre warned <laughs> yes. or warned ahead of time. <laughs> Almost impossible to do uh -huh. down the line. So I, I was thinking about some changes that had effects on me. And I remember uh, this is in my teaching career, and it's really not a very significant change. But, you know, when you've been in one room for about eight or nine years and you're pretty settled in and you know the people you're working with, and all of a sudden you come back to school, they're like, um, you're going to move to the other end of the hall, and you're going to work with these teachers instead of the ones that you're used to working with. It's like, now how is this going to work, you know? But it turned out really well. And But I was very apprehensive about the change, and I think that's the way um, we all kind of respond to things like that. And but sometimes, you know, ahead of time, it's work. I know. <laughs> you just fret. You just fret and worry. Right? Yeah, just fret and worry about it. Fret and worry about it. Well, as we said, 2020 was definitely a year of changes. Changes. Oh, my goodness. Did we accept them without thought, or did we rebel a little and question why? Well, I have to kind of admit, I was wanting to be a little rebellious. You know, why, can't we, why can't we come to class? Why do I have to wear a mask? Why does this store require this? Why, why do the restaurants close down? Why did my mother have to die during this time? You know? Mm -hmm. you, you experience the same yeah. thing. Uh, you know, why did we have to experience all this? So I think we can say yes to all that. Yes, we were a little bit rebellious, maybe. Yes, we had to accept it. We didn't have a choice. And it was our joy in it. I have to admit, it took me a little while. <laughs> it took me a little while to realize and back off and say, God's got this. There were good things about it. Yes. There, 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 are, uh, there always is some good things that come out of things. Mm -hmm. um, there were good things that happened. And sometimes that, I'm supposed to go with Okay, sure. I, I probably should have already mentioned that. So we do, we can, we do find joy. It's just a matter of sometimes our attitude, sometimes looking in the right place. Sometimes it's about being with the right people, you know? Um, often we can look back and see the hand of God and the changes in our life, and we are able to celebrate the, the joy or find the joy. So let's look at some of these questions I have. We're in the book of Ruth. Um, can someone read Ruth 1, 1 through 7? Okay. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, and there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, which he sojourned in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Imelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Mahon and Shalon. For us in Bethlehem, Judea, and they came to the country of Moab and continued there. And Imelech, Naomi, 
Lee's husband died and she was left with her two sons. They took them to, they took their wives of the women of Moab and the name of one was Ophra, Ophra. And the name of the other was Ruth and they dwelt there about 10 years. And Malon and Shalon died also, died also, both of them. And the widow was left with her two sons and her husband. And she arose with her daughters in law, and that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard it in the land of Moab, and how that the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters in law with her, and they went on the way to, to return into the land of Judea. Okay, thanks. So, a few changes. How many changes are listed in those seven verses? Let's, let's name them. She lost her husband. She lost her two sons. She yeah. had to move. She had to move. There was a famine. That was kind of weird. Yeah, a famine. And then when her sons got married. Yeah, that was a change. Yeah. And they married different foreign women. women. Yeah. Like foreign women, uh -huh. which was not supposed to be allowed for the people of Israel, was it? But maybe they didn't have a choice if they were in a foreign land. That's true. <laughs> then she moved again. <laughs> she moved again. And then, even after she moves, and later on, we find out that Ruth marries Boaz. So, another change. So, lots of changes there. And over a period of years, I mean, it says that after her husband dies, they, they, were, or, or they were there about 10 years. So, it was over a period of years. But those are major, significant, life-changing changes that Naomi experienced. Where's the joy? Where's the joy? Well, the weddings. She might have been joy. Yes. Yes. The weddings brought joy, probably, and the thought of grandchildren, maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it could be exciting to move to a new place start over. Sometimes that's a good idea. Sometimes it's not. Um, but lots of changes. Lots of changes. There might not have been immediate joy because it takes time sometimes, especially when there's a death. Um, you know, you don't see that. But the joy can come by knowing you can be at peace. Do y'all find that? You know, knowing that God's in control you don't have to fret and worry so much if we won't, you know. The joy comes from knowing that we have peace. And also, changes and struggles can bring us closer to God and to a closer relationship with um, others. Obviously, as we read on, we know that you know the story. Ruth did have a very close relationship with Naomi and was blessed by that. Um, okay, let's look at Ruth uh, verses 8 and 9, and then skip down to 14 and 18. And we want to look at the emotions that Naomi's daughter in laws, Orpah and Ruth, had as Naomi decides to move back to Bethlehem. Let me just say, from Bethlehem to Moab was not across the block or across town even. Bethlehem and then they had to either cross the Dead Sea or go north and cross the Jordan River or cross the Jordan River and go down to Moab and then returning. And that was no easy feat. I don't know if they went by themselves or if they went with a group. You know, it doesn't specify, but still. That was a journey. It wasn't just a move across that road. So it was a significant thing. And think of, of course, they don't have all the stuff we have nowadays, you know, <laughs> that we experience in a move. But um, I'm sure it still wasn't an easy thing to do. And then when Naomi decides to move back, that was um, an experience for her. She wasn't, she didn't have her husband, she didn't have her sons then as they traveled back. 
So let's read verses 8 and 9, and then someone and jump down in 14 through 18. Someone want to read that? I will. Okay. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Verse 14 says, at this, they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So, let's talk about their emotions. They must have had a good relationship. Yeah. Because they were both really very sad. Uh -huh. They were both sad and cried. And this says they wept. It says in there twice. Verse 9 also says they wept. But then Orpah decides to stay in her homeland. But Ruth, what was her attitude? She was determined not to. She was very determined to stick by, by Naomi, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's a strong pledge or vow or promise that she makes uh, regarding uh, don't urge me to leave you. Don't Please, you know, she's almost begging, isn't she? And then she goes, wherever you go, I will go. How many, how many relationships? It almost sounds like marriage vow. Well, mm -hmm. you know, they use this, this verse a lot of times in marriage vows, even though this is a relationship between a, a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law, but they do. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge, your people will be my people. Think about that. You know, she's giving up a lot. Uh, your God will be my God. Uh, it is a, a, um, a pledge and a promise that is very sincere, very deep, and um, very abiding, don't you think? That must have made Naomi feel very good. Obviously, there was... A great deal of kindness shown in that relationship. Uh, yeah. It makes you wonder about, you know, I know Naomi left with her husband into this foreign land. It mm -hmm. makes you wonder about if they brought God with them or not, because then the sons married foreigners. Mm -hmm. And then they're saying that you go back to, your, she's she's just saying, go back to your gods. Right. Like our God, the one and only God is important. Right. And then, and then when Ruth says, your God will be my God, so Ruth knows, seems to know there's a difference between their gods and her God. Yeah. And I, I think in reading this, when it comes down to uh, Ruth knowing that she could glean in the fields, that was part of God's law that he gave to Moses. You know, uh, that was his provision for those who couldn't provide for themselves. And Ruth knew that. So she must mm -hmm. have known something about. So she knew that they could go I, back and get some food. I think, I think Naomi had uh, shared. That's my belief. I can't, it doesn't say so in the Bible, but in reading this story, you kind of get the, and the kindness that was shown to them that she would want to stick with her, not knowing you know, how it would work what out. What do you expect? Yeah. How it would work out. So um, it's a relationship that is pretty incredible. Now, I have two daughter in laws, and we get along pretty good. I don't know if they would move in with me or not. <laughs> I kind of think they wouldn't, but you, you know, that's you a, know what the future brings. This is true. This is very true. <laughs> You moved in with your daughter. I know. I never expected that I would. <laughs> Actually, technically, 
but she was in the house before I was. Other than we true. both kind of moved. <laughs> Y'all moved in at the same time. So she was there a couple two weeks before. Me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I moved back home. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You never know. I you never know. And it works out. I don't think my sister would look for her. I take care of it. But it does, that relationship has to be really good in order for that to work out. Right. I mean, yeah, it does have to be. There has to be give and take on both sides. Now, my son in law, and my, you know, since I'm his mother in law, he mm-hmm. might have a different opinion of this. <laughs> Men have different opinions sometimes anyway. That's it. Yeah. But I'm sure that it, um, it's a good one. So, how do emotions help us cope with change? And I, I think we can really talk a little bit about that because we've had to deal with change. We've had a range of emotions about this situation. So does it help us? Does it hurt us? Well, getting angry if you're having that emotion doesn't help too much. Especially if you stay angry. Mm-hmm. What else? Sometimes not having a whole lot of emotions and kind of accepting really makes a difference. I, I can't help this mask. I can't help having to stay home. You might as well accept it and mm-hmm. go on. You know, mm-hmm. what you're doing about it. So. Make the best of it, so to speak. Yeah. Do what you can do. Yeah, I know. I, I spent a lot of days sewing. That was my getaway, uh, which is very joyful for me. I mean, it brings me a lot of pleasure to do that so if you find something that you do enjoy and can do it is helpful the house is cleaner than it's been in a long time <laughs> <laughs> had a lot of time to spend on that didn't we all this going that we always do <laughs> we were able to slow down some so you know uh-huh. that, that was a good thing that came out of being at home a little more than usual. People claim that you wouldn't believe what we've got to do. Blessings. <laughs> so emotions can help in a lot of ways. Um, negative emotions, as long as we don't keep them around too long, mm-hmm. can make us. And I think also um, what focusing on ourselves sometimes we can get to doing that. And uh, when we do that, that's not very beneficial if we're focusing on ourselves. Um, You know, pity parties are not a good thing to go along with. Um, But like Lynn said, if we just accept it, do the best that we can, move on, make the most of it, our attitudes can help us. And we can find the joy. We can find the joy. Um, We've had to spend more time with our kids, our grandkids. (laughs) (laughs) Spend more time helping them learn. (laughs) What? (laughs) Don't forget about that one. Let's talk about that. Well, it's very hard for some kids in the ages that they are because they like to get up and go and have stuff to do. And it was just hard. I told them at work, I said, if y'all ever hear me complaining about having to take somebody to a sports practice, hit me. Reminds me. Like, I was like craving that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Because it was like, you know, every other night you're going to soccer or basketball and then it just stopped. And, oh my goodness. Yeah, so what do I do with it now? What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> and and then I'm even tired, like even coming to church on Wednesday night. Uh-huh. Like, we're doing this Tuesday with this Wednesday, this Thursday, and then it's on board. Right. Oh, board. And, and they're used to being active. Yes. And not just them. Us too. Well, I'm true. Know. Right. Tuesday, right. ladies' Bible class. Tuesday night, Cub Scouts. Wednesday, bowling. Wednesday night, church. Thursday, cards. cards. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, if you every day you're busy, 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 and then all of a sudden everything just stopped. You don't know what to do with yourself. So no, I didn't. You work your blessings. Did y'all continue to do that all through the shutdown? Did you really? Cool. Yeah. We just locked it over. Yeah. So they could not come in. Well, that's a good, I mean, you got to get a lot of things done, didn't you? 
that you don't have time to get done when there's a, a busy time. So, yeah, this is a good thing. God slowed us down and helped us to find some different ideas about how, how life is lived and uh, show us some new experiences. But there's joy when we get back together. How, how good did it feel when we were able to go back to Sunday worship? It was great. Not, not, not just watch it or be uh, have your own service at home by yourself. And that was okay for a while because, like, we'd get up and make these cakes. Yes. And we're sitting there, you know, with a blanket on us, watch. And that was okay. But then after about a month of that, you're like, mm, not as great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It makes us appreciate me. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, the, the girls got spoiled because. With it being on TV, they got up and walked around the house. Yeah. And so now, when they come here, they want to get up and walk around. <laughs> well, that makes it hard. Yeah. <laughs> and they're right at that age where they're like, well, we've got to walk around last year. So I know. I know. <laughs> so it, it's, it's been a challenge coming back to worship for them <laughs> and for us. It's been funny. So if you see them walk out the above, you probably have, because they have. <laughs> anyway, I think they do really good. You do, thank you. <laughs> so as they go back to Bethlehem, you know what the funniest thing is to be? I read this, and let me see if I can find it. Uh, the whole town was stirred up because of their return. They didn't need social media. <laughs> Everybody already knew. Uh -huh. And they knew who they were. It's kind of funny, but I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. As they return, let's look at Ruth 2, verses 1 through 3. How am I doing? Oh, we got plenty of time. Marcy, you want to read that one? Sure. And Naomi had a relation of her husband, Amina Wealth, and the family of Eliam Lent, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth, the um, Mobites said to Naomi, Now let me go into the field and take up the heads of grain after him, in whose eyes I may have grace. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and took up the heads of grain in the field after the cutters. And by chance she went to the part of the field, which was the property of Boaz, and was of the family of William Lent. And I don't know. You're fine. Elimelech. Elimelech. That's how I say it. But I don't know if they do it right either. Um, so what do we find here? What plan did Ruth have? Because they didn't have a means of providing food for themselves. She had a plan. So she did. About to the fields to gather of grain, mm -hmm. but sent her, she sent her to Boaz. It's you know that was like a little bit confusing because at the beginning it says, you know, Boaz was a worthy man, uh, and she he was a, a relative of her husband. But and then she says, "Let me go to the field and glean after him who I shall find favor." But then it says uh, on down in verse three that she happened to glean in the field with the reapers that of the field that belonged to Boaz. So so it just happened. You know, it, it's that part, it seems like it. So maybe it wasn't Ruth's plan, maybe it was God's plan. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And, and that's what the question is a little bit later. Well, in this, how do you see God? That's the next question. How do you see God providing for Naomi and Ruth as they experience so many changes? And, and that's kind of the focus of the lesson is as they look back, you know, the death of her husband, the death of her sons. Now, and, and in the end, we find out that Boaz and Ruth are in the line of uh, David, which is Christ, the family line of Christ. So God has a plan. God has a plan. And if we can focus on what you know, we need to take care of and find joy in the things around us. Um, time will tell. Time will show us. Time will help us. And all of y'all know this. You know it. 
I know you do. You've experienced it over and over in your life. Um, how you can look back and see what a horrible change that something was has turned out to be a blessing. If not for you, someone around you, you know? I mean, how much is Adam blessed to be with you? Linda, he and probably doesn't Kendrick. drink, so. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. uh, but okay. it is a blessing for him. You know, you can see that. Children can't always see that. But I imagine if he was pressed, he would say it was a good He thing. still really misses his dad. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Um, last night or the night before, he was asking me about it. I was stranded on a deserted island, and he was asking all these. He comes up with some weird oh, questions yeah. sometimes. Anyways, what two people, if you could only bring two people with you, who would you bring? Uh -huh. And I didn't answer him because I, he, he, it, he's very, very jealous. Uh -huh. He thinks I should love him more than anybody else in the house. You uh -huh. know? So I always tell him it's just not the same. It's different. I love Jasmine different than you. And I love Jimmy different than you. Anyway, so I said, I said I'm, I'm not sure who I would pick. Who would you pick? And he told me his cat. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> and and his, dad, his dad, though, you know, his dad. And then I said, Well, you said a person, so you can't just say the cat, you have to name a person. Oh, well, one of my friends who has really good survival skills, and then he never would name the friend, but anyways, but it was still his dad, yeah. You know, so, well, just don't get over it very and, fast. No, and it's so that kind of thing, I'm sure, is very hard on children mm -hmm. to, um. It's grieving, you know, just like grieving. Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, not just like I'm sure there's a lot of differences, but <laughs> there, uh, But he's still grieving the loss of his dad. Yeah. Okay. And it'll be a long time before he gets over that, if he ever really does, you know. Uh -huh. So, and I mean, the death of someone that. We've all experienced that, that's close to us. Um, and, you know, my mother died this year. I've had a sister that passed away and a brother that passed away young in their lives. And so it's hard to see those as joyous and a blessing, but as time passes by, you see that it's worked out. Um, so what other ways did God um, provide for Naomi and Ruth? Oh, we didn't read first. Let's jump down to Ruth 2, 4 through 13. That's kind of a long one. That just that talks about, we can go ahead and read it. Um, I'll read this one. 4 through 13. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and he said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. How much kindness is that? When the owner comes and says, Lord bless you. Yeah, I know. That was, then Boaz said to the young man who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, she is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, please let me glean and gather from among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. So she was a hard worker. Then Boaz said to Ruth, now listen, my daughter, do not glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing down to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered you, answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me, and how you left your father and mother in your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward will be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then he said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. So, 
I think Nellie had a hand in that. What do you think? Definitely. Um, God was with Ruth as she, um, whether she chose that field or it was chosen for her, you know, it was the right one. Boaz was very generous, watched after her. She said he comforted her. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of an interesting comment, don't you think? What do you think that was about? I think it's that he showed compassion when he was referring to her losing her husband and going to Ruth. I mean, Naomi. Do you think she may have been a little fearful? Yeah, she's so there among strangers in yeah. yeah. a foreign country. The NIV says, you have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like, okay, I don't want to be nervous about doing this. Or, you know, are they really going to let me pick up the leftovers? Are they going to me away? Or what? And he reassured her his men wouldn't bother her. Yeah, she wouldn't be abused. Mm -hmm. She would be taken care of. And put her on a pedestal just saying, you know, she took care of her mother-in-law. He, uh, he was grateful for that. You know, she, so word had gotten around that she uh -huh. had been very kind and, and been um, caring of her mother-in-law to come back with her and, and want to take care of her like that. Because um, a woman without a husband was, um, they didn't have a lot of support. Um, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I don't, I don't know. They had, they lived with extended families back then, but it, you know, it's not, wouldn't have an inheritance and she didn't have children that would bring her an inheritance with her sons being dead. So Ruth was, God planned it. God planned it. He has a masterful plan, doesn't he? Sometimes when I'm reading and thinking about all the things that, that go on from um, different stories, different events in the Bible, I'd rather call them events. It's pretty amazing how God works through them. And he's still doing that today. He's still doing that today with us. And I, I think we feel it and know it. Um, not necessarily in a miraculous way, but in a providential way. And the, the way that you can pick up this book and find verses in it that encourage and get you through things is joyful. It is joyful. And it gives you peace of mind. And I think that's part of what joy is. It's not a happy, laughing all the time kind of joy, is it? It's more, peace. It's more of a peace. Your mind is at rest. Your mind is, you're not worrisome. You're not anxious. I mean, we do get that way, but it it can be short-lived if we allow it. It can be short-lived. Um, God's timing <laughs> is amazing, isn't it? Let's go ahead and read chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Uh, when did you have that one? Chapter 4, 13 through 17. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And the Lord enabled her to conceive. She gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child, laid him in her lap and cared for him. And the women living there said, Naomi has a son. And they named him Obed. And he was the father of Jesse, the father of David. What joy is there? There's a lot of joy there, isn't there? A wedding, Boaz and Ruth. Ruth has a son. 
and the lineage uh, is continued in a masterful way. And Naomi gets to take care of the grandchild. So through all the heartache and the suffering and the changes that she experienced over her life, as a as a, a mother-in-law and a, a grandmother, she experienced a lot of joy. And um, oh, how did it? Put it? Well, first of all, did you find it interesting that Boaz is called a redeemer? But that's what they called the uh, relative that redeemed the, uh, well, redeemed Ruth um, due to family inheritance is what it, and that didn't happen by accident because there was another one in line before him. But um, when he found out that he needed to marry Ruth, he wasn't willing to take the property and, and didn't want the wife, <laughs> which God's plan, right? Uh -huh. God's plan all along. So how else did God provide? Oh, let's we'll see. Uh, there was one other thing in there that was, I thought was interesting. Did you find anything in those verses like that just stuck out to you? Well, obviously, Naomi must have ended up at Boaz's home mm -hmm. taking care of the baby. Mm -hmm. So there's the fact that she got her home out of it, and plus now she's grandmother. I thought it was interesting that they said, you know, she was Ruth was better than seven sons. I know, <laughs> yes, dad. I'm like, okay, girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty hot girl for me, don't you think? Uh -huh. yeah. Better than seven sons. Mm -hmm. Um he shall be a restorer of life and nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you. I think your version used something different. Is, yeah. Anyway, I've, you know, again, it's mentioned that Ruth loved and showed her love for Naomi. Um, okay. Anything else there in that? What can we do to find joy as we face changes? And how have you coped? We've kind of talked about that along the way, but is there any special thing that you've done this past year that has helped in coping with the changes that we've experienced? You said you worked in the Blessing Center, so that gave you an outlet that was a, a worthy outlet, a very needed uh, job done. What else? We took a lot of walks in the spring, especially when I had to be online and Adam had to be online and all the schools were virtual. Uh -huh. Just we decided to get out of the house and take a break and walk around because it's sitting all day. It's very, it's very so bad. A lot of our neighbors while well, we're out walking. Oh, uh -huh. nice. And a lot of neighbors. and. Well, that we didn't know before because uh -huh. other people were out walking because nobody could go anywhere. Right. So we were all out walking on break time, break from school in her case. my I just went along for the rock, for the walk. But just in enjoying all the beautiful flowers in the spring that I oftentimes miss because I'm so busy. Busy with school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was work. But in the summertime, we decided to take a camping trip because we thought it's it's the it's one thing possibly we could do and be outside and, be, you know, not be near people mm -hmm. and so we we had our wives in the car to use every time we got gas <laughs> but we went all the way to Yellowstone National Park we went we went all over the place we were in Arizona for a week or two and then we went to then we then we came home for a week then we went to Yellowstone and we went to Missouri I mean, we went to Branson wow. Missouri so we were wow we traveled a lot this summer just because and it was an opportunity to spend time with Jasmine because otherwise she'd be gone at camps Everything was canceled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she didn't have to be home to get to encounter. She didn't have to be home for one of the camp was their impact. Impact. And you know, so so we didn't have to like rush home. So instead we went to Yellowstone. 
and all five of us, I mean, no, Jen I just, and me and Kendra and Jasmine and Adam and yeah. Jimmy couldn't go, but yeah, we, so we spent a lot of time together in that sense. That's nice. A trip that probably, it probably wouldn't, wouldn't have happened, happened at least not with Jasmine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. So we made memories. Anybody else? I never quit working, so <laughs> you, you <laughs> never got to get a break no. from the work. Which was the only thing I would come crazy. That was probably it, so yeah, we can we can look back and see that. Mm -hmm. You know, even though it was a very busy time for you at work and maybe a hardship, it was a good thing to mm -hmm. <laughs> How did y'all find the homeschooling type thing? <laughs> but it was hard on you, wasn't it? It was hard for me to keep Adam on cast. That's she had to do her own thing. I know. I that's what keep, I'm saying. He had his little schedule, and I had to like say, "Okay, it's time to do this. It's time to do that." What are you doing? Where are you? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, she, well, and she, I, I she tried, and then I learned it was easier for me to just be upstairs and to help her. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon she he listens just, to me better. Yeah, he does. He listens to her a lot better than he listens to me. Kendra would hear us arguing in the kitchen. Uh -huh. She'd she come up from the basement and say, okay, <laughs> Adam. And then she'd say, all she'd have to do is say, Adam. And he'd straighten right up. Yeah. Grandma, not so much. <laughs> I, I took Troy over to Terrace. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mama take Troy to Terrace. Uh, uh, she was doing Troy and Cooper in her class. There you yeah. go. They kept us busy. They, they kept us busy. Yeah. <laughs> I find it kind of hard, don't we? To get all that done. Well, I think there are some things that we can look back and say. We recognize and accept that God is Almighty, and if we we look at that, that's that can be, and He's in control. That's what I kept saying to myself. God knows what He's doing. I don't understand it all, but God's in control. He knows what's happening, and He loves us. And he wants us to seek him. We just need to, well, every time I say we just, I back up because that makes it, that simplifies it more than it needs to be simplified. We need to praise him, give him glory. And I think sometimes if we'll spend time thinking about that, we realize. Um, how much he cares, really how much he cares. And then we will also realize, like we've said already, how much we need each other. Um, the Psalms are full of comforting words. Was there any particular verse that you would bring to mind during this time? Did anyone have anything that was special? Proverbs 3 5, trust the Lord with all your heart. There you go. Proverbs. We love Proverbs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Lean not into your own understanding. Wow. But we want to so badly sometimes. <laughs> We've got it all figured out, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> we think we do sometimes. Yes. Of course, Philippians is one that you can, I mean, Paul in prison, and yet the things that he writes in Philippians. Um, I wrote down Psalm 66. So let's look at Psalm 66 right quick. Psalm 66, 1 through 7. And then... I want to jump down and read 16 through 20. So let's look at those. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sing praises to you. And they sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds. Toward children, the children of men. 
He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. They did rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations, but not the rebellious exalt themselves. So um, it doesn't say he wrote this, but kind of reminds you of Israel when they mm -hmm. uh, were um, rescued or out of Egypt. At the end of mine, in verse, seven, in verse 7, it says, mm -hmm. let no rebel rise in defiance in this version. Okay. And I thought, so so basically, we aren't supposed to be defiant. <laughs> so we shouldn't be yelling, why? Why, why? is this happening? <laughs> As long as, as we don't stay fight. in that path, you know, as long as we don't stay in the path, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I like the ending of it too. Come and hear all you who fear God and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. God listens. He knows us very well, doesn't he? He knows what we need. We just, there I go again, we just, I wish I could get rid of saying that. We need to trust him. We need to trust him. And then another favorite is um, Psalm 100. And you've probably heard this one over and over. Can you really want to read that one when you get in? Sure. Earth, sing to the Lord. Be happy as you serve the Lord. Come before him with happy songs. I switched versions. Do you want me to go back to the NIV? It doesn't. No. That's okay. Fine. okay. What you <laughs> Sorry, have. I just realized. I no, you're fine. Okay. Verse three. Know that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep he takes care of. Come through the gates to his temple, giving thanks to him. Enter his courtyards with songs of praise. Honor him and bless his name. The Lord is good. There is no end to his faithful love. We can trust him forever and ever. I like the end of it. My version says, uh, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, which we all know that phrase. Mm -hmm. And his faithfulness to all generations. All generations. That includes us. I do believe that includes us. Um, Okay, that's pretty much all I have. The other thing, well, one more thing. As in Naomi's instance, God placed Ruth in her path to help her along the way. And God often places people in our lives to help us. And we can probably see that. And we need to rejoice and be thankful and, and deal with everyone kindly, like Ruth did with Naomi. And we'll find joy. God has a plan. Um, next week, we're going to talk about how do we find joy when there, we are alone and unappreciated. You ever feel that way? You ever feel unappreciated? That still from Ruth? No. Okay. It's from, from Dave when David's a young boy. Oh. So it comes from uh, some chapters in First Samuel. I wrote them down. Uh, First Samuel eight, sixteen, and seventeen. So that's what it's about. Uh, now we'll just do one night on Ruth. <laughs> so thank y'all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you for your input and your comments. It was good. It's very fun to be out. Yes. Yeah, and this is a good setup because we're we're kind of distant. Mm -hmm. 
It's very and we can wear masks or not wear masks, but we still are six feet apart. So, I'm not. That's why I wear my mask. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's wrong me all the time. <laughs> I'm just so used to wearing it all day that it doesn't bother me. Really? Will it change with the kids that you don't get to wear them? Yeah, they say, as LSD said, they haven't decided yet. Because no. I mean, Cooper made an announcement yesterday, I know. Like two hours after he announced it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was quick. Yeah, that was bad. They're not going to do it. Every year that Cooper's going to school, we do the first month or so, he's had strep throat. He hasn't had an issue. Really? They may talk about a lot of that one. Well, Josh, you didn't have all the money he needed. It was just like the second, third week of school. He was kind of scared of her. Adam's still got that. Adam's here. He wore a mask every day because it's fourth grade and he said that strep throat. Oh, I don't know how he got Cooper's it. Cooper's fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cooper's fourth grade too, but he, did, he didn't get strep throat. Mm -hmm. Well, who knows? Who knows? People usually, he's not there about putting stuff in his mouth or chewing. So he probably, when he's getting it, he's probably touching his stuff. Put his finger in his mouth. You can't do that when you have your mask on. <laughs> right. <That's crazy. laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get it. Makes a difference. I know I, I was going to a quilting class and we had to wear a mask. And I have a bad habit of putting pins in my mouth. It was like, yeah. What do I do with this pen now? <laughs> I can't put it in my bag. Paper. Uh, uh, that's funny. Yeah, I can't put it in my bag. I'd go the adjustments I, we had to make. Uh -huh. <laughs> I went to use it. I started using a hand sanitizer to get the oh, first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh huh. That makes sense. So. Well, I think we've all learned a lot this year, and we can look back and say. We're part of history. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely that. Um, yeah, this year will be talked about for a long time, won't it? It will be. Yeah. I'll have t-shirts. We survived 2020. Yeah. I kind of blame my daughter-in-law for COVID one time because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't really blame her, but they live in a house the old farmhouse that was built in 1918, which was the Spanish Spanish flu. Yeah. And they were doing a big remodel last year to the house. <laughs> I was like, okay, it was built during the Spanish flu, and now you're doing a huge remodel and adding on to it. And we have COVID. Uh, <laughs> anyway, coincidence. That was probably the time to do the remodel because a lot of people weren't working. Well, I think it it was a challenge for them to get everything done because they had to put in a new septic tank and they live out in the country and on the farm and yeah, it was a little bit of a challenge, but but everybody was working from home, so her husband was around all the time. My son was around all the time. So he could supervise and work. Sort of, but it was a major Add on, they added on a uh, whole apartment for her grandmother oh, wow. to move in and added a room and a bathroom. And it was a pretty big deal. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, thank y'all. Well, thank, thank you. Y'all have a good rest of the week. Yeah.